Hey Harmonizers, it's Bunny doing a little bit of training. So Bunny is now three years old and so I brought her out for another training session. We're still not going to do a whole lot with her because she is so young, but it's good for her to come out every now and again and do a little bit of work and just kind of keep handled. And so here we're doing a little bit of some jumps to warm her up and I had the goal of just doing some groundwork, exposing her to some of the things that are out, as well as the commotion going around the ring. I love to send horses over jumps when they have a saddle on, when they're green, just because it lets them feel the saddle, the, the stirrups flopping around on them, and just helps to make sure that they're feeling okay with everything. This is now doing some obstacles. She was doing super amazing with the little turtle there and over the mattress. And she's naturally quite brave and figures out these obstacles pretty quickly, which I'm really happy about. So she's um, very smart, very brave. Here's her put in all four feet on that mattress and she's really, really good about it. Some horses, they take a long time to build up confidence over squishy things. So in contrast, Treasure has also been working on doing some mattresses and doing some different things. And Bunny picked uh, it up really quickly, whereas Tom's Treasure, she's still a little bit wary of mattresses. She'll do them, but she's a little bit unsure, whereas Bunny's pretty easy going with them. She was a little bit worried about this... Um, I don't even know what to call it, this little tunnel, I guess you'd call it. I guess it's technically a little cat tunnel. And she was a little bit worried about that. So you can see I'm giving her some cookies as she allows me to touch her body and kind of move it all around her. And being able to rub your horse with something funny is a great introduction to them not worrying about different things and being able to do a lot of different types of obstacles. So she's doing really well with that started off really worried about it. Here you can see I go to rub on the other side and she moves a little bit away from it, but overall not too bad, tossing it up on her bum. And it also helps to just simulate, let's say we were on a trail ride and something fell on us or um, you know, something uh, was blowing along or there was a plastic bag because somebody littered or something at a horse show and it fell out or whatever. There's lots of reasons why something could be moving around. So anytime you can have the opportunity to just rub your horse with something that's a little bit worrying, a little bit funny looking, like there I put that up on her back and I just let it fall off. And it's like, yep, yeah, no big deal. And she's like, look, I didn't get scared. I get a cookie. And you're like, yep, that's right, bunny. So here is uh, doing another mattress. So this is a different style mattress. This one has a little bit of a hard, hardish top or a stiffer top. So it's got a little bit of a different sensation. And you can see she's really good about that. Just like up and over all four feet touching it. And what I'm trying to get her to figure out is that I want her to leave her back feet on it in order to earn the cookie. So here I'm asking her to put that other foot on. She's only got one foot on. So I'm seeing if I can just ask her to move over she comes all the way off the mattress and this is one of the lovely things about using positive reinforcement is you know i don't have to get big or aggressive or push her or anything i just simply re-ask and the fact that she didn't get the cookie she understands that she didn't do what i asked her to do so here she's like is that what i'm supposed to do I'm like okay yes because you got your back feet on it but not with the pawing but that's okay she's doing a great job learning and trying she's being really motivated and is showing um, lots of great attitude towards doing these different things so here just doing a little bit of a ground tie one of the things in extreme cowboy racing that we have to do is a ground tying picking up feet so we're just starting on that moving um, she obviously picks up her feet because she gets her feet trimmed and things like that, but just being able to ground tie and stand still while we pick up those feet is a good skill to be doing. And there's a lot of commotion going on. There's another person riding in the arena. You can see they just went by the screen there. So there's stuff going on and she's doing a great job of learning how to deal with that. She's getting a lot better about her attention span. And a lot of people who get young horses and they work with them at one years old, two years old, and they're really all over the place. I try to tell them like, don't get too upset or worried about it. As they get a little bit older, their intention span does get better. So just do little short sessions and then it will just kind of naturally happen that you can try a little bit more and a little bit more and go a little bit longer with the different things that you're doing with your horse. It uh, 
it starts off frustrating though because they all seem like they have ADHD and they're just all over the place with their focus, but it really it really does get better and Bunny's a great example of that. I literally have been doing nothing with her since you guys last saw her last video. She's sat in the field with the other horses and other than coming in to have her dinner every day with everybody else and get her hooves trimmed, she really hasn't done any training sessions whatsoever. And then I brought her out to do this training session and she was a superstar. She was a little bit worried in the beginning looking at some different things, but overall went really, really well. I think the whole session we probably did um, just under an hour between like bringing her in, brushing her, tacking her up, everything. And she held her focus really well throughout the whole thing. So I was really, really happy with that. And here just showing you a little bit of her lunging, a little bit of her walk trot canter where she's at. I thought it was interesting. So before I set up the camera to film her little bit of lunging, I had done a little bit already and she had her canter perfectly both ways. And then I thought it was interesting that I set up the camera to film. And then all of a sudden she struggled with getting her left lead, which I thought was interesting. And um, so there she's cantering on the left lead and she picked up the left lead pretty good. And then I asked her to hold it a little bit longer and keep going. And she gives a little bit of sass, ends up on the wrong lead. And you can just tell she's not really bending the best way, but we're not going to be picky about it. See there, she swapped leads with her hind end. So she was actually cross cantering in the back. So I just allow her to take it again. And there you see she cross canters again. So she needs to um, fix that. So I just bring her down to a trot and get her to fix that. And I'm just asking her to hold that lead just a little bit longer. So there she's holding it just fine and bring her down. And we'll have to, you know, train her to bend better and have a lot of those things better. But we just need that willingness and that quietness of what she's doing first. So we want don't want to be too picky about all of those little pieces. So after we did all that groundwork, it was time to go for a little ride. So I bring her over to the mounting block. And again, she's only three years old, so I do very little riding. She hasn't done anything since the last video that you saw. And so I'm bringing her over here. And the goal really is just to do a little bit of sitting on her, a little bit of um, walking, a little bit of backing up and whatnot. Uh, still don't have an interest of you know getting her trotting or cantering or anything at this point. I just want to keep her progressing a little bit. And there is some research to say that if you start getting on them young-ish, but being very light with what you do, that it can be good for their bodies to know where weight is happening. Kind of like how a gymnast, if they start when they're young, it's better for their joints because um, their body adapts. And so kind of the same thing with riding. So we're just going to do things really light. Um, she's three and I definitely don't want to hurt her back or anything like that. So I've sped, I had sped up the video so that way it's you're not watching forever and you can see that's why the cat looks like it's going ridiculously fast or why the person riding by was so fast or that person's really sweeping really fast is because I've sped the video up uh, just times two so you can see I spent a fair bit of time just kind of sitting at the mounting block making sure she was really relaxed and then I do a little bit of walking and moving around. So first just kind of turning the shoulders a little bit, giving her, you can see she's doing some bends both directions, getting her cookies. And then I'll ask her to do a little bit of walking again. So just keeping things really, really basic. For me and my training program, I put having that calm connection as a real priority. And we say that a lot in Harmony Horsemanship is is having that calm connection. We want that horse focused on us. We want that horse relaxed, calm, thinking, because we can't learn if we're upset. So this is all just about Bunny being really relaxed with having a person on her back. I want her to think that being ridden is a pretty good deal. So this is now the footage slowed down into just regular time. So you can just see a little bit of what it looks like in real time walking around. So just doing little basic little circles, a little bit of turns, a little bit of backing up, just making sure she understands some, some basics. And she's just starting to figure out that she can take direction from me up on her back as well as on the ground. And it all kind of makes sense and kind of sticks together. And I'm really impressed with how she's doing. Now I've sped the footage up again to 
times two, just so you can kind of see her whole ride, but not be super bored while watching it for it being ridiculously long just because we are just kind of slow walking around. And when I'm training horses in the beginning, I try to usually stay in one area where they're really relaxed. And then as we get that comfort with what we're doing, then we can move on to more spaces. It's kind of like um, you just don't want to overwhelm them or what's called trigger stacking them. You want to try to work with them where they're nice and relaxed, and then you can move on from there. So here we're just sitting, hanging out for a second while she's um, just relaxing a little bit. And then what was happening is uh, another horse that's from her field was actually leaving and left out the barn and was going back to the field. And so she was a little bit looking out the door and that's why all of a sudden you can see her attention perk up and she's like, what's going on over there? And it's her friend leaving. Uh, which was kind of unfortunate timing. Um, it actually ended up working out just fine. And so I just kind of turned her away from looking at that other horse. And I decided, you know what? She's a baby young horse. She's done really, really fantastic. We're not going to do any more here. We're going to hop off. She listened to me. She turned around and the other rider was finishing up with her horse too. And I'm like, we do not need to blow up a young horse by overwhelming them with everybody leaving the arena. So let's just plan to leave with everybody else as well. So that way it ends on a good note. And that's part of good horse training is think of where your horse is at.